So that was an unnecessary explanation, or as my friends and family like to call it, a Tina story. Hello, welcome to Sad and Fury Book Reviews. As usual, I am Tina. Because it's Valentine's Day, I figured I'd drop this review of the love story, ooh, Lore Olympus. Yes, this is not my usual genre, but I can meander into other things once in a while. I'm also wearing my pink shirt, which also happens to have a gun on it. Uh, <laughs> my friend bought this for me, and it's hilarious. I don't usually wear it around the town, but uh, uh, it, I think it's amazing. So anyway, uh, Lore Olympus is by Rachel Smythe. Uh, the, it's printed in 2021, but I think the webtoon's been around for a while. It's a graphic novel, as I said, based on this, or, you know, taken from this webtoon, and Delray published it, so... What is this book? <laughs> well, it's a graphic novel about a modernized but still fantastical retelling of the Hades and Persephone myth. I first heard about this thing on Pinterest of all things. So you know when you can't sleep and it's like two in the morning, so rather than stare at the, you know, the ceiling, you like look on your phone. So one time while this was happening, I got into Greek mythology memes. <laughs> I don't know. I've always loved Greek mythology because it's so entertaining and it's so weird and like it's so funny. And kind of snippets from this webtoon popped up in that kind of feed because of obviously the content. Uh, as such, I looked up like what where this was coming from and I saw there was a printed collection, so I asked for for Christmas. Christmas, and then my brother-in-law delivered so yay I have this book now so that was an unnecessary explanation or as my friends and family like to call it a Tina story and I will not apologize for it in words to the book I really liked it the artwork is very pretty it's got like this whimsical kind of it's got this like whimsical style to it that I think is quite charming. <laughs> it's definitely not one of those like gritty ultra realistic styles like in The Walking Dead or even Saga, which I have up here. I have them up there. I had them lower in alphabetical order. Um, but my four-year-old was like, what's this? And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. You can't look at that. Uh, anyway, so I think the artwork, though, of Laura Olympus really kind of suits the style and the tone of the story. And I thought it was really, really pretty. Speaking of the story, it's 100% a romance. It follows the structure, you know, of setting up the couple, showing why they're a good match, and then not putting them together at first. Which, you know, given I knew what I was get getting into, it worked for me. <laughs> So there are different variations of, you know, Hades and Persephone, but if you forget about it or don't know, I'm just going to quickly recap it. So Hades, as hopefully you know, is the god of the underworld. Persephone is the daughter of Demeter, goddess of the harvest and the seasons, I think, I can't remember. Either she, either Persephone stumbles into the underworld or is abducted, you know, it, there's different versions of this. I prefer the more consensual version, of course. <laughs> Uh, her mom is like, don't eat anything. I think she's like seeing her being abducted or tells her that or somehow Persephone knows this or whatever. Persephone either ignoring this advice or forgetting it eats six pomegranate seeds when she's there, which means she's cursed or can stay in the underworld with Hades for six months of the year. Apparently Demeter, because she misses her daughter so much when she's gone, makes, makes it, you know, winter time because she's depressed. It's one of the like explain the seasons myths that a lot of, uh, a lot of older cultures had because they didn't have science to explain why we had the seasons so they're like oh yeah this is why i really love that about kind of old, old mythology <laughs> it's really interesting <laughs> speaking of demeter in this book like in lore olympus it's shown she <laughs> she's shown as like a very intense helicopter mom who shelters persephone given there are like varying takes on the greek gods not you know not everything has to like be like Ovid, I thought the personalities that she gave the gods worked well for the story and also, you know, were a bit more modernized. Hera, you know, isn't shown as a nag, which I liked because usually, you know, she's shown as this like kind of nagging, annoying wife. And I'm like, well, maybe she's like nagging Zeus because he's like a real dick. <laughs> He's awful. Anyway, I always felt bad for Hera. I thought the side story in this book about Eros was a bit long, though, and distracted from the main plot. And, you know, I wasn't super into that because it comes up right after the whole Hades and Persephone start off. So I was like, why are we going on this trajectory? Like, can we get back to the main story? <laughs> uh, so while I did like Hades and Persephone's chemistry. I thought it was cute. I thought they did a good, she did a good job showing why they have things in common. I found Persephone was a bit too naive. You know, she almost felt like a teenager at times and Hades was, because of that, felt a bit too old for her. I mean, they are immortal, so maybe that doesn't matter, but it just kind of felt a bit weird. <laughs> and I mean, I really did like it overall though. The volume ends on a cliffhanger, which I kind of expected because there's, you know, it's a long, it's a long graphic novel. And there's also a very serious scene at the end about consent and manipulation and sexual agency. It was pretty hard hitting and very thoughtfully devised. 
So despite me reading the whole thing in like under an hour, I tried to drag it out. I tried, but I never can with graphic novels. I just read them so fast. I still am going to end up buying books two and three probably because they're so pretty. <laughs> So if you like the Hades and Persephone myth, if you like Greek gods at all, if you like graphic novels, and if you like romance, I think you will like this. Again, though, it, it is a hardcore romance, so it, it most of the story is focused on that, so you won't find the same kind of intricate plotting that you would something like Saga, but uh, not everything can be Saga. <laughs> I still have to read, like, I think I only have... I think I've only read eight volumes. I need to, like, catch up on it. Um... Yeah, so thanks for watching and happy Valentine's Day!